because if you don't bribe, you're not competitive and you're, you, you push to start to do illegal things. You squeeze enough, and it's, it's, it's not healthy, it's not good, but this is what's going on. We don't have a level playing field like that. Is the beers manipulating the distribution of diamonds so as to increase their profitability at the expense of the diamond manufacturing, training, and retail receptors? Now, I don't know, a lot of people may have opinions about that. I'll present what I'm going to present here today. But I, this is not a, this is not a good news. This is not the way things should be in the diamond industry, in my view. Is the leadership of the diamond industry honest? I don't mean that they'll pickpocket you, or maybe even lie about the quality of the diamond. But if they misrepresenting what's really going on, So we have in front of us two primary issues. One issue is attempts by larger companies to push out smaller and medium-sized companies in the, or through the distribution system so they can reduce competition and increase, increase profits. That's what's going on today in my view. A little guy. I don't know if you're toast yet, if you leave it up to the big guys, you will be toast. Attempts by the leadership of the dynasty to greenwash them. So that's one issue. Do we get rid of everyone in this room? So that the bears diamond go from the mine to the consumer. I don't know. I'm waiting for this. Uh, what's this new thing with synthetics? What's it called? Uh, light box. Light box. So what happens when light box starts selling on Amazon? Yeah, that would be really fun. Or maybe forever more. I don't know. But the bottom line is that the big guys are coming down on us and the little guys are becoming toast. That is what I am seeing. Now that's one issue. The other issue is this greenwashing. In other words, diamonds that come from illegitimate sources which involve things that cause the level, the level, the playing field not to be level, those diamonds, they tell you it's okay. It's fine. We have a Kimberly process. We have RJC. We have the Royal Diamond Council. Everything's fine. I'm sorry. You're a bunch of liars. It's not fun. The situation is bad. Not acceptable. And it's really upsetting to me. Because it just continuously goes on. And no matter how much I scream and yell, it doesn't really help. So I'll explain why I think that we have a problem with the leadership of this industry not addressing the issues that they need to address. We'll go into it some level of detail in a few moments, but first of all, let's take a look at a video. Human Rights Watch in May 10th, 2017, I think it was 2018 actually. Diamond trade still fuels human suffering. Why? Why? Why should that be the case? Hopefully this video, whoops, let's go back one. I'll click on it. Video. <coughs> Thank you. 
so that could be Human Rights Watch, maybe they're biased. I mean, this video was recent, it's the last couple of months. So maybe they don't know what they're talking about, maybe they just make money because they're an NGO and they like to just point out miserable things because this is how they retain their thing. But so now it's Martin Rapport talking here. I'm making a living. Nothing to do with having to point out the evil stuff. As a matter of fact, when I point it out, I get kicked out of places like the Byron Diamond Universe. Look at this graph. Look at it, see if it's there. I'm not against uh, the UAE, or particularly, I'm not against Steady Plenty. My friends, what the hell is going on? Every year, diamonds go into the UAE, I think this is 2015, I don't know why we don't have the 2016 data, but it's the same data. For some reason, we pulled the wrong graph in. But look, 5 billion comes in, 7.3 billion goes out. What the hell's going on in the UAE that those rough diamonds become worth more money? There's no mines there, there's no real. How does the rough come in and go up by 48%? How does that happen? How does that work? So I brought this up when I gave a speech in India, which was, I could say, not well received. And they, uh, the head of the Bharat Diamond Horse, who later actually threw me out of there, I look back to jump something and says, no! I said, maybe well, you guys, if you're exporting diamonds to India, which cuts 90% of the world's diamonds, so you're exporting a higher prices so you can keep your profits in Dubai. And I don't care about transfer pricing, frankly. It's a government's price, it's not my problem. I'm interested in who funds al -Qaeda. I want to know where the money goes. So they don't, no, no, all the diamonds imported to India are imported at true fair market prices. That's not how I believe you. Could someone explain why the diamonds are being imported into UAE at 40% below market prices? What's happening here? The whole world's involved in money laundering. Everybody's busting their chops, filling out forms, checking off endless numbers of boxes. Where does the $2 billion go? What kind of industry, and this is the official Kimberly process numbers, where is the $2 billion going? World Diamond Council, where is the money going? World Federation of Diamond Bourses, where is the money going? RJC, where is the money going? Why the hell can't we know where the money's going? Two billion dollars a year. Well, slowly but surely we'll see. I can't get an honest answer. Our minister's being bribed. Where, where did, uh, what's her name, Isabella de Santos, how did she become the richest woman in Africa? I am telling you, our diamond industry should be ashamed of itself. And I hate these organizations that consistently pat themselves on the back of how good they are. Where's the two billion dollars? If you can't answer that question, don't sit here and make yourselves fancy great organizations. You suck. I don't accept it. All right, part of this. India is a great country. I love India, and I have a lot of people that are not against India in any way, shape, or form. And you know, it's a big country. They Diamond industry people are great there, but they cut 90% of the world's diamonds and they have no anti money laundering laws that relate to that. Zero exemption. I'm not blaming anyone here. I blame the industry about Dubai, about UAE, yeah. But in this case, I'm not blaming. I'm saying we have to work together with our Indian companies to make sure that they do implement AML stuff. It's no excuse. 90% of the world's diamonds are coming through without any AML or CTF. We Americans are going down there and buying diamonds. Yeah, are those diamonds coming from Zimbabwe? They're coming from the Congo? They're coming from Angola? Where are they coming from? No idea. I'm telling you, no idea. All they do is Kimberly process the goods, and the Kimberly process doesn't look at human rights abuses, doesn't look at anti money laundering, doesn't look at counter terrorist funding. We're not doing anything. Okay, my report's advocating, advocating. How many years have I been doing this in the show? 20 years? But I'm saying to you, we're getting to the point now where there's so much more controls, so much more knowledge. We are probably a big, big hole in how we are dealing with our product. I don't even know. I, I worry. I worry. I said to my son, Israel, why am I creating craft here? Why am I creating better ways to trade diamonds? Is that to sell more of these blood diamonds from unknown sources? 
We must know where our diamonds come from, everybody. We must know. We must. We must. So I'm encouraging us not to fight against our Indian friends. No, no, no. They are our family. They are our brothers. They are our sisters. We are one. And don't get me wrong here. But we must work together to encourage the government of India, in fact, to implement AML and CTL um, obligations and, and monitoring uh, and compliance on the entire Indian industry. India is a huge hole in terms of what's happening. And here's another funny fact. Okay, so we got $2 billion cooking up in Dubai all the time. Now we got another interesting story. We do, according to the Bears announcements, official data, there's an extra $3.13 billion of diamonds floating around beyond the Kimberley process. And all these guys, oh, don't worry, everything's fine with diamonds. They're a bunch of liars. Additionally, now maybe the Bears' numbers are wrong. Maybe instead of $3 billion, it's only $2 billion. You know what it takes to blow up a World Trade Center? I'm serious. Where is this money going? We're buying the goods. We're putting them in our jewelry stores. It's us. We're giving the money for these things. Where is the money going? It's not just that you have to know where your diamonds come from. You have to know where your money is going. I don't know that we're not feeding terrorist organizations. I think we are. And now our industry needs to get off our butt and really relate to these things by having relationships, by going in deeper with our suppliers, by knowing what's going on. So you're talking about 26% more than the KP. Oh, 2% of the diamonds are non-conflict, and then we lie and we cheat. And we say, well, conflict diamonds are only diamonds that are like this and like that. And, you know, no money laundering obligations under the Kimberley process. The Kimberley process is greenwashing machine. Biggest greenwashing machine I've ever seen. And that's not enough. I'm really hot to I'm really pissed. I'm really unhappy. Let's see a letter from the beers to their suckers. In relation to programs such as GIA's Mind to Market or other downstream initiatives seeking to make providence claims, seeking to let us know where our diamonds come from, we have declined all such requests. The beers has declined all such requests. But that's not all. The sign of their signature license clause, three, I'm quoting from the letter, 3.6.6 states, you, the sign holder, you, the accredited buyer from the beers, you will not represent that any particular diamond or diamonds are sourced or originate from us or any member of the beers group except with our prior written consent, which they've said we've declined all such requests. My friends, I, you know, I'm getting old, I'm getting tired. I really am. Yelling and screaming from up here doesn't necessarily change the world. But enough is enough. There's a red line here. You want to try to take over the industry? Fine. You want to go synthetic? Fine. Free markets. But when you deny us the ability to identify where our diamonds come from, and I'm talking about 40 or 43% of the legitimate diamonds in the world. You're saying nobody can know where they come from but us, the Bears. We are denying the opportunity for the diamond industry to know where the diamonds come from. I say enough is enough. No, 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 I won't stand for it. And no one here should stand for it. So yeah, the beer sales in 2016, 5.3 billion. KP was 12.27 billion. I'm talking about legitimate diamonds here. 43%. How are we supposed to know where our diamonds come from? So look, let's face the reality. The beers is proactively destroying transparency and making the source certification impossible. And yet they parade around here like good guys. They're not good guys. This is the mother of evil to say that if you buy a diamond from the beers, you can't tell anybody where it came from, so now 43% of the diamonds are opaque? No, 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 no. The beers is using their dominant rough diamond market power to control the distribution of legitimate college diamonds by denying independent third party source certification of polished diamonds. They say no. You want to know if a diamond's kosher? Come to me. No one else can tell you if 43% of the world's diamonds are okay. <laughs> wow, unbelievable. It's not a principle, it's beyond principle. 
And we don't know this. We may believe we don't know. And the leadership of the Diamond Street, where the hell are you? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Now, it should be clear that source certification is the key to our future so that we can run a legitimate diamond industry. We can live in a legitimate diamond industry. We can sell diamonds with a amount of confidence about what's going on. But I still say go to Africa, go to Surat, go out there, every one of you Jews, get out there, so that, you know, take a vacation if you have to in India. Go to Surat, go to Sierra Leone, go and touch and feel and build relationships with people who are on the supply side. Go far and deep into the rest of the world. Stop sitting here like ducks to be shot. Because tell me, tell me something, guys. If you just sit here and rely on the bears, you're going to be out of business. Number of Jews are going to keep declining because they will take over the distribution. But I'll look, deal with those issues. But I want to talk about source certification. Who needs it? Everybody needs to know where diamonds come from. Government regulations. OFAC, FinCEN, Patriot Act, OECD, corporate responsibility. If you're on the board of, say, excuse me, that Signet, and you're in some kind of a blockchain agreement with the beers, and the beers is doing the kind of stuff they shouldn't do, expect an antitrust investigation. Expect, expect, because I will make sure it happens. So, brand threat. You're selling diamonds that come from I don't know where? Socially conscious consumers. Ethical competition, my diamonds are better than your diamonds because they know where they came from. Synthetics and treatments, we don't know what's known. We don't know where diamonds come from. We don't even know they're diamonds. Bank regulations, law enforcement, all of this dances around the same circle of source certification. So why am I so bent out of shape today? I'm bent out of shape because my source certification capabilities are not been cut off by the bears. They want to use that to control the distribution of legitimate diamonds. No, no, no. But source certification is the way that we have to go. But I'm telling you, everybody's got to participate in this. We have to investigate our suppliers. Not just the guy in the Indian. Go to Africa, go to Surat, go to the sources. Let's get into this business, not just to sell, but the buy side. If we buy better, that's how we make money, everybody. Think about what we can do as jewelers, even small. We will try at Radford to make trips to, to do whatever we can to encourage better relationships. Better relationships between the supply side and the demand side of the equation. So source certification and transparency, Radford is working on, but we're going to work on something very simple. The mine invoice. Assuming the mine is RJC certified, and the only mine of the beer says it comes from one of six mines or seven mines, as long as all of the components are kosher, the end thing is kosher. So if you got seven mines with the beers, it's okay, as long as all the mines are RJC. But I gotta see an invoice. I gotta see an invoice from a mining company that's legitimate that says there's a 10 carat, a 5 carat, a 3 carat, a 2 carat, and that every one of those stones gets tracked through the factory. Because the factories have software. And monitor these diamonds so that the people shouldn't steal them. Very sophisticated software. Serene machines doing graphs of what the diamond is. Um, workstations. Well, I'd rather put people going to a factory and say, Workstation 14, we looked at your software. They're supposed to be after working and showing the stone. We're, we're modeling it after kosher certification. And then, of course, get to the GI grading report. Or it could be an IGI, or it could be another grading report. It could be an IIDG, or not against the bears. Anything good that they now, when you get that grading report, you know you can match the diamond to the grading report. So if you can go from the rough invoice to the grading report, Rappaport can say, we will give you a source certificate for this GIA number 1234. Now the diamond can trade hands a million times, who cares? So this idea of being able to create, and we're going to do this in Latin. We're going to get little green stars. I don't know, little green, i got to ask myself. This diamond, we know where it came from. We got all the data. This is a very important part of our future as a diamond industry, being able to authenticate where our diamonds are coming from and even authenticate that they are diamonds. So I've had my two primary issues that I told you before, and let's try to understand them. One is this attempt to control the distribution system, and so we can raise prices for us. Another is the ethical and moral responsibility that we have to know where our diamonds come from. This guy, Dana Short. Dana Short's an interesting guy. 
He was very uh, Trumpy and Rappaportian, big pen in the ass for everybody. Very sad, he actually died at the age of 63. He was born, same year I was born, I'm 66. He died at 63, three years ago. Now he went to these meetings and he started to say things like, artisanal diggers are gonna get screwed because of all of this compliance stuff that we're doing. It's all about the marketing. He was against RJC for that reason. I was for RJC, I'm still for RJC. I still think people should become RJC members. Please, do that. Because it puts us on the slippery slope of legitimacy. It puts us in the right direction. I think what the RJC is doing is good, but it is totally half-assed. It's not even half-assed, if you ask me. It's not even ten-assed. It's just blah. It's a marketing game, like you guys said. He said he believed that industry leaders would use the concept of responsible sourcing to apply compliance standards that will eliminate small and medium-sized dealers. That's what he said. He believed RGC would be used as a marketing tool to greenwash diamonds and gems without doing anything to help artisanal miners. I sort of agree with that. And I'll say one thing very simple. Where the hell's the $2 billion out of Dubai? If you can't answer that question, you should be walking very low. You should be moving very, you should be very ashamed of yourself. I thought him wrong, but he was right. He died. It's a shame that he died, because you know he was a real rambunctious troublemaker. Uh -huh. I thought there was someone that was more bothersome than me. But I do want to remember him today. Uh, remember his ideals and his values. I told him once that we had a, a conference we were going to do, and I didn't invite him because I felt that he would be disruptive. And I promised to write an article about him, which I didn't do. I, big interview, and so I want to mention him now. Uh, and I think that the things that he pointed out, which was the relationship between trying to create an ethical standard for, for diamonds and trying to destroy the middle market would work together. And when you think about what's going on with this uh, De Beers refusal to allow people to know where their diamonds come from, I think Dana hit it right on the head. Right on the head. And there's no, it's just amazing. Okay, so we're going to stop everybody from knowing where the diamonds come from. Totally amazing. So the De Beers problem, the Beers trying to control the distribution of their diamonds from one consumer, over time they'll be cutting us out of the diamond business. No one here should be under the illusion that there's a lot of room for small to medium sized dealers in the, I'll call it the De Beers, uh, what was it? Bane plan. Maybe it's the pain which basically says that we should be highly efficient and who needs all these people making free markets for their polished diamonds. Should the diamond industry trust the bear's leadership? We've been in that way, and you know, we'll talk a little bit about synthetic impacts, but should we trust the leadership? Are they leaders of the diamond industry? Why is the bears buying source information while branding their own socially responsible diamonds? It's exactly what Shor was talking about. So they're going to make their so-called blockchain, yes chain. They're going to do this stuff their way. Supposedly it will be open. I don't believe them as far as I can throw them. But meantime, nobody else can say that 43% of the diamonds is where they came from. Why is that? It's a, it's a tool. It's a device. It's a way to force, to coerce, to monopolize. And what about the beer synthetics and light box that everybody is talking about today? Look, I think we need to understand something about the beers. The beers is a corporation. The diamond industry for generations has been a family business, and we treat each other as family, and we love each other as family, and we fight as family. Corporations do not have a heart. They do not have a soul. They are making money, and they don't care about anything else. Face it. How many people here own Anglo-American chips? Not many. Not anybody. Well, you're suckers. Because the bottom line here is that that is what De Beers believes in and stands for and goes for. Mickey Mouse has a wonderful costume, but my friends, there is no Mickey Mouse. Santa Claus doesn't exist. The Bears is not your family, it's not your friend, it's not your daddy, it's not your mommy. The Bears is simply a cold, cruel corporation in the business of optimizing how much money they can make. They'll throw out a few little 
you know, well, we love you, and we like you, we'll give you some charity here and there, but that's not their purpose. I would say to you, the Bears is no longer DM on terrors. They are not members of our community. They are people who prey upon us. Synthetics, now, they're geniuses. The smart part of what they're doing with Lightbox and synthetics is against the main, and we have to respect them. We have to respect people, even if we emotionally don't agree with them. You know, I have this whole thing about Trump and this, this, this the magazine here. Because we have to like Trump. You've got to understand what Trump is doing. And when Trump does something that's brilliant, he's doing something brilliant. 